This is the last video that will get you ready for the quiz over 8.1 to 8.4. This is section 8.4. Uh, the title of the section is called Trig Substitution, which is kind of a strange name when you look at the problems. There is no trig in the problem. What's actually happening in this section is you take what's written in an algebraic form, you use trig to rewrite it, so you turn every, everything x is into sines, cosines, secants, tangents, something like that, because that allows you to integrate it, and then when you're done, you go back to x's. And the way you do this is with one of three models. We have to look at the original problem and decide which model it fits in based on looking at what's under the radical, trying to see if we have an x squared plus a numeric value, an x squared minus a numeric value, or a numeric value minus an x squared, just kind of looking at the order and the operation that is happening. This is definitely something that you want to have each model with, we call them the replacement parts, put on your note card so that you can very quickly say, okay, it fits this model, here are the parts I need to replace, here is the replacement that needs to be done. So when you look at the first one, you have a square root, you have the variable first, and then subtracting the constant. So if you look at your note card when you do this, and it really helps just have your note card right next to it, even right now as you're doing these, you're going to look at your three models and realize that this falls under model one. Model one is when it contains the variable squared minus the numeric squared. We said u squared minus a squared. So the first thing I'm going to write down is what x equals, what dx equals, and what the radical equals. In this case, when every time I talk about a, a is going to be 3, because that is the number that was squared. So if you're looking at your note card and you see 3, and then secant theta, your you're a secant theta, you're going to write c3 secant theta. So your x value, x again is just your, we're calling it your u value, a x is going to be 3 secant theta. dx, the derivative of that, is 3 secant theta tangent theta and your radical is equal to 3 tangent theta. It also may help now, or at least by the time you finish the problem, is to draw the triangle that represents this. All of this information is not random. It comes from the Pythagorean theorem and our basic Sokotoa ratios. When I look at my triangle, my opposite is going to be my radical, so the square root of x squared minus 9. My hypotenuse is going to be x, and my Jason is going to be 3. This is going, this is where all of the things that you wrote up above came from, and it's what we're going to use to finish the problem once we're done integrating. So now we're going to look at the problem, we're going to replace everything there. So first we're going to replace, the first thing we see is the radical, so we're going to replace that with a 3 tangent theta. The piece that students forget about the most is don't forget in every single problem you have to replace dx, and it will always be part of the numerator. So I'm going to replace dx with 3 secant theta tangent theta. And I'm going to replace the x on the bottom with 3 secant theta. So these are all the replacements that are being done. You're always going to have at least two replacements. You're always going to have to at least replace the radical and the dx. Some problems you have to replace x, some you don't. Then you want to see what cancels. So one of my 3's cancels, and one of my secants cancel. And what I have left is a 3, which I'm just going to pull out front, and a tangent squared. So here's when the actual calculus happens. Now we have to integrate what's left. And we look at this. Tangent squared is actually an integral that we would have talked about a lot in section 8.3, one section prior to this. Tangent squared is not something we can just integrate as is. What I do instead is I rewrite it as secant squared minus 1. That was one of our Pythagorean identities. Now we can integrate it. And again, I'm just going to keep the 3 out front. The integral of secant squared is tangent. The integral of 1, we usually think x, but in this case, we're working with thetas, so it's going to be a theta. Now, finally, here's where I'm going to use my triangle. I've used my trig. It helped me integrate. I'm done integrating. I need to go back to x's. I need to go back to an algebraic form. So I want to look at my triangle and figure out what should tangent of theta be replaced to. So if I look at my triangle, and here's my theta down here, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So my tangent theta should be replaced with the square root of x squared minus 9 over 3. That is the opposite over the adjacent. Minus, if we want to replace an angle, and this is something we talked about the second day of 8.4, the only way to replace an angle instead of with a trig ratio is actually to use inverse trig, because that's what inverse trig is. It's a representation of an angle. So I can pick any inverse trig. I can write arc sine, arc cosine, arc tangent, arc secant. It does not matter as long as I use the correct ratio by looking at my triangle. I almost always use arc sine. It's the first one I think of. It's one of the most common. 
And so I'm going to look at my triangle and figure out arc sine. So, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So it's going to be the arc sine of the opposite is the square root of x squared minus 9 over the hypotenuse x. So here's our first example. This one definitely be a little more challenging than some of the ones we did on the first day because you had to use an identity to integrate it and because when you integrate it you had to replace an angle, which doesn't happen very often. Only we only saw that happen in a couple problems as we went through the section. Next example is also a subtraction, but the difference between this one and the one you just did is it's subtracted in the other, in the opposite order. Now it's the number minus the variable. So that is going to fit the first model that we talked about in class. So again, we're going to write down our replacement parts. So we say u is just x, a is 2. So I have x is going to be 2 sine theta. The derivative of that is 2 cosine theta. And the radical, 4 minus x squared, will be replaced with 2 cosine theta. When I start replacing things, dx is the only thing that's going to go on top in this one, so I'm going to put a 2 cosine theta on top. On the bottom, I need to replace an x squared. So what that means is I have to put this value in and square it. So I have to put in 2 sine theta squared, or you can just square it out as is right away. And then the radical I'm going to replace with 2 cosine theta. The 2 and the cosine theta is cancel. I am left with, when I square out the 2, I get a 1 fourth integral of 1 over sine squared. Best way to integrate that is write 1 over sine squared as cosecant squared. So I get 1 fourth the integral of cosecant squared. So this is using kind of a short identity, just a, in, a reciprocal identity. And then the reason I did that is because cosecant squared is a known integral. The integral of cosecant squared is negative cotangent. So I get negative 1 fourth the cotangent of theta. At this point, I'm done integrating. I'm done with the trig. I need to go back to the algebra. So I'm going to draw my triangle now. Could have drawn it at the very beginning. That, that's fine, too. Eventually, you need to have that picture there. So on my triangle from model 1, the opposite is x, the adjacent is the radical, and the hypotenuse is 2. And again, this, this is where all these replacement parts come from. It, they all follow the Pythagorean theorem. So now if I look at my triangle, I want to figure out cotangent. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So instead of opposite over adjacent, it's going to be adjacent over opposite. So I'm going to look at my triangle. I'm going to have negative 1 fourth. The adjacent is the radical, 4 minus x squared. And the opposite is x. If you want to write that as a single fraction, just to put the 4x next to each other, put the negative out front, that will be fine too. And that one's finished. Last example is very similar to one we did in class, but I wanted to do one more with you so you weren't thrown off when you take a test or a quiz over this section. This one doesn't look exactly like the ones before. Uh, the biggest difference with this is all the other ones you have that radical. This one is not written in a radical notation. It's written with the rational exponents. So the first thing you want to do when you see a problem like this is you want to go back to writing it as a radical. So I'm going to write this as the square root of x squared plus 16 but then I have to then cube that radical, because that's what the 3 halves power means. I'm cubing a square root. Anytime you see something like that and it's not written in a radical notation, you want to rewrite it. Usually we don't like radical notation, but for this particular type of problem, radical notation is really how the problems are set up. Next thing I want to do is I want to look at my models to try to figure out which model. This one's maybe an easier one to identify because it's addition. And the only one that deals with addition is the model 2 on your note card. So my u is just x again, my a is 4 this time because that's what's squared to give us 16. So when I set up my parts, x equals 4 tangent theta. The derivative of that is 4 secant squared theta. And my radical, x squared plus 16, is equal to 4 secant theta. So when I go into my problem and start replacing things, my dx is going to be replaced by 4 secant squared theta. In the bottom, I'm not replacing x this time. I'm only replacing the radical, but it's cubed. So I have to take this 4 secant 
theta that the radical is equal to and make sure I cube that. We are going to have 4 secant squared on top and a 64 secant cubed on the bottom. When I reduce that, I'm going to end up with 1 16th as my coefficient, so I'm going to bring that out front. And I'm going to be left with 1 secant in the bottom, because I both of these secants cancel with two of these secants, so I have 1 over secant, which hopefully right away you recognize that that is just cosine. The integral of cosine is sine, so I get 1 16th sine of theta. At this point now, I need to go back to the x's, so I'm going to draw my triangle if you haven't done so already. On this model, my opposite is x, my adjacent is 4, and my hypotenuse is the radical x squared plus 16, or you could write 16 plus x squared. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so my answer is 1 16th, and then opposite is x, hypotenuse is the square root of x squared plus 16, plus c, and this one's done. So what I did is I tried to do one of each model, try to show you some different things that can happen. This one, the good example is that you have to rewrite in radical notation. One of the previous examples, the idea that sometimes it's not just x, it's x squared or x cubed, where you have to put in multiple factors of it. And the biggest thing to remember is the dx has to be replaced every time. If you're doing a problem and you're really struggling to integrate it and realizing that things aren't canceling the way you expect them to, double check to make sure you have dx replaced by whatever dx is equal to, and that a lot of times is the one issue that maybe is getting you stuck. So hopefully these problems give you an example of what you'd see on a quiz and what you're going to see at the end of the chapter test.